So we're grateful to have Dr. Hani from Brunei, who will be uh, speaking on oral health and hygiene in special care patients. So Hani, welcome. And on the panel, we have Dr. Jacob John from the University of Malaysia and uh, Professor Callum Durwood uh, from Cambodia, Phnom Penh. Um, so Hani, thank you for so much for giving up uh, your time and we look forward to your lecture. Thank you very much, um, Prof. Uh, uh, as I said, thank you so much for um, it's a pleasure for me to be here, and it's an honor to um, to to present this um, this lecture on oral health and hygiene care for people with disabilities. Um, as you know, uh, this lecture is part of the lecture series brought by the uh, Global Child Global Child Dental Science. Um, uh, in, this, in this lecture, we'll cover about what disability is, um, oral health with uh, and people with disabilities, as well as hygiene care for people with disabilities, where we will learn how to develop an oral care plan to support people with disabilities. So, uh, first of all, this disability is part of being human. Um, everyone is likely uh, to experience some difficulties in functioning in some point of their lives particularly when they're growing older. Um, it can affect all ages and social classes. And approximately 40% of global population experience disability. And to include 12% of those aged 18 to 64 and about nearly 40% of those above 65 years old. The United Nations um, United Nations uh, Convention of Rights on People with Disabilities defines people with disability as those who have a long-term uh, physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairment um, that could, uh, with which in interaction with various uh, various barriers, may hinder their full and active uh, participation um, in society on an equal basis with others. An impairment means uh, refers to a functional limitation of a person's ability. And this could mean um, caring for oneself, walking, hearing, seeing, breathing, reading, or any of our day-to-day -day, um, activities. Another way of understanding disability is through the uh, World Health Organization International Classification of Functioning, where the outcome of the interaction between individuals with a health condition um, and the personal environment and the environmental factors. So it covers not just impairments, but also activity limitations and also participation restrictions. So hence not all people with impairments would have a disability or would they require special, or if they require uh, special additional needs. This is the same with dental care. Um, for as we go through for in, um, in this, people with physical disabilities are those where um, it affects their mobility, their physical capacity, stamina, or dexterity. Um, having a physical disability does not necessarily impact on a person's health status. However, uh, restrictions in um, hand mobility may, uh, may impact their access to the mouth in, in, terms, of oral, um, in terms of oral care or their physical ability may impact their access to dental surgery if they didn't have any accessible um, parking or accessible um, uh, dental surgery itself. For people with intellectual disability, those are uh, those with impairments that affect how someone learns, how, how they communicate and carry out everyday activities. The amount of support that they require throughout their life varies according to their, their intellectual disability, and they may have any additional disabilities. However, their difficulty in communication can complicate relaying if they, do, uh, if they are in pain or to describe uh, the source of pain. Sometimes the untreated pain that they experience can present as a challenging behavior. People who experience impairment um, of any of the five senses um, are people with sensory disability. 
for example, for pe people with visual impairment may affect their ability to see. So it would find they will find it difficult to see uh, whether they've done the oral care effectively. People with hearing impairments may find it difficult to listen to instructions or um, people with speech difficulties may find it difficult to communicate and require other means of communication. With regards to touch, um, it's uh, important to include people with autism spectrum disorder. This is um, a developmental disorder where individuals find it difficult in processing um, of everyday sensory information. Uh, further support uh, may be required as they have dif differences in their communication and uh, they may have restrictive behavior which make it challenging in any changes to their everyday routine. People with psychological disability are those who have long-term mental disorder illness and this may impact uh, may cause dysfunction in their day-to-day -day life, impacting their social, uh, just life, and also work life. It is important to note that an individual may have more than one disability, or may need more than um, more support in um, in overcoming this. Next section would be our people with disability and oral health. When compared to the general population or people without disabilities, um, people with disabilities have poor access uh, to oral care and they have higher levels of oral disease. Studies have shown that people with a disability have poorer oral hygiene, higher pulp levels. They have more extensive and severe periodontal destruction as well as higher rates of untreated caries. This is due to the poor oral uh, poor access to oral care, and hence they have severe, more severe oral disease. Um, with care being provided late, higher rates of teeth were being uh, are resulted in being extracted, and with fewer replacement of teeth. The oral disease um, people with disabilities experience remains untreated and this places uh, additional burden to their quality of life when compared to those of, um, without disability. The risk of oral disease increases when the person has more than one disability or complex health issues. And we know from studies that oral care for people with disabilities are not complex and they can be provided by um, experienced dental practitioners. Um, in primary care settings or community settings where patients can have a dental home, where uh, it's a facility, a dental care facility, which is local and familiar to them, which they can go to for dental checkups and treatments. Complexities. Uh, the British Dental Association developed a case mix toolkit to assess patients' complexity in receiving dental care. And this can be applied uh, for patients with disability or patients requiring special care needs. Um, assessment is done by according to six identifiable criteria. First of all, um, their communication. It reflects on the issues of communication between the dental team and the patient, their guardian, or even the carers when they're in the surgery. Um, patients may have non-verbal non communication or use of assistive devices. Yeah. Um, secondly, is patient's ability to cooperate, or it affects the deli uh, delivery of dental care. Uh, patient's ability to open their mouth to accept care, or uh, when, when they require behavioral techniques such as distraction, uh, desensitization, or need for additional staff to support care for them. Patient's medical status, uh, their complex medical history may require modification to care. For example, for patients with stroke or neurodegenerative disease. Patients may have oral risk factors um, that could complicate care, such as malocclusion, gerostomia, sensitive gag reflex, uh, dysphagia, 
patients who are peg fed uh, or with severe erosion. Access to oral care uh, refers to how a patient attends from their, their home to the dental surgery and how treatment uh, and then to the dental chair. Um, do they need any special transport, any special equi equipment, or if they're required to be seen outside of the dental surgery by use of mobile clinics or domiciliary dental care. And the sixth um, criteria would be any legal or ethical barriers such as regarding consent to dental care and how with it and receiving dental treatment. So in this section, we look into oral hygiene care for people with disabilities. Um, so what sort of support or how the development of an oral health care plan to help support their care on a day-to-day -day, um, uh, day -day oral care. So with reference to the evidence-based evidence documentation on delivering better oral health, um, the principles of oral care uh, also applies to those who require special, needs, uh, special care needs or people with disabilities. Um, in that uh, brushing your teeth twice a, twice a day, um, to have it twice a day or lasting at night or one other occasion, using fluoridated toothpaste, um, spitting out after brushing um, rather than rinsing, and then also to minimize the amount and frequency of sugar food and, uh, and drink in terms of diet. Studies, however, studies have shown that oral, oral care for people with disabilities are quite complex. They require adaptations and modifications to conventional treatment planning. And this uh, needs to be within the needs and preferences to the individual patient and also their carer. And as well as the incorporation of preventive dentistry. Individualized oral health care plan should be developed through identifying problem, the problem of the issues that we want to address, what the goal is, um, needs to be realistic, and to provide ways on how this can be approached. So problem could be um, what the, uh, their daily oral hygiene can be complicated by behavior, their behavioral or medical status or habits or that patients um, may have um, halitosis, or that they have um, high carrier stress, um, or hyperodontal disease, uh, dry mouth, dietary consistency, or any other uh, problems that they uh, need to be addressed. Looking at this problem, we look into what goals we want to do, and it could be very simple. Uh, simple goals, improving, improving oral health, or either that, or reduction in the physical resistance, um, increase the cooperation in daily brushing, or to maintain uh, or achieve any ability to perform their own oral care. The co goal could actually be in the next six months, no new caries. And we're looking at approaches, the four approaches that we can um, look into for the individualized oral health care plan. First of all, we look into the individual considerations. Um, first, to check how much support um, does the patient need in performing oral care. Can they brush without any assistance? Can they effectively brush with supervision, with, the, um, with reminders, prompting, or timing? Does the patient have um, some dexterity, but their cleaning techniques may be insufficient? So we may need some hand over hand techniques or prompting or um, to co co completion to, to let them start first and then complete by the um, carer. Or there would be some patients who require significant or total assistance in um, oral care. Next one will be toothpaste for use. Can they or can they not use any toothpaste? Um, if they do, um, 
sort of toothpaste do they have, whether they need color control, desensitizing, or um, whether the toothpaste needs to be flavored or non flavored, low foam, um, especially for those with dysphagia. And if they cannot tolerate any toothpaste, perhaps dry brushing or having a moist brush, whether the brush uh, is dampened with mouthwash. Can the patient rinse? And if they can, uh, perhaps um, to incorporate uh, fluoride, uh, fluoridated um, mouth rinses for them. Uh, patient's ability to floss. Uh, we're looking at uh, also uh, toothbrush choices. There's no superiority in toothbrush or um, uh, toothbrush choice. It could be soft crystals, whether it's powered, it's angled. Um, or the use of suction brushes, or um, or aids to help with the um, with the toothbrushing. And then, lastly, what method of brushing do we need to um, to uh, to use? Whether it's horizontal brushing, circular, uh, gentle vibration, whether it's a quadrant order, quadrant by quadrant. So this is just an example of toothbrush choices that can be um, used with modifi uh, with um, um, the Collis curved brushes or the uh, Barman's toothbrush. Any modifications in the holding of a holder to help um, with patients with uh, holding the toothbrush themselves. The second approach is in terms of positioning, um, whether uh, we're looking at how the patient or the individual is positioned, whether they're seated, uh, either in a wheelchair or in the kitchen chair, lounge chair, bathing chair, doesn't mean uh, whether, what, whether it's preferred, sitting is preferred, or whether standing would be preferred. And if the patient is lying down, whether um, the torso needs to be supported or to the side. Secondly, would be provider positioning uh, for uh, those providing the, uh, the brushing. The two most common um, positions would be the side and foot or back. Uh, other things to other factors to look at would be if, there, if there's any uh, leap and cheap restriction um, to allow visual access and other needs to ensure safety, for example, um, uh, an additional person to help support the brushing. You can check out um, the website www.brushmypiece.ie um, that has a number of videos on tooth brushing for uh, whether uh, for different uh, positions, uh, whether they need um, whether dependent, uh, independent, or some help, and the different um, types of brushes that they have. The third would be any behavioral support. So this could mean um, a number of things. Um, for example, a scheduled time. Uh, you're looking into um, whether brushing would be done in the morning or what, what time exactly um, and how many times the brushing would be, whether it's um, uh, two times a day or two times per day and how many minutes um, is required for, for brushing and support uh, to allow effective brushing. Uh, whether rest periods uh, need to be allowed. We can have egg timers or alarms uh, to make sure um, it's within the scheduled uh, limit. Secondly, you're looking into the place or the location, more, mostly the room and location uh, to ensure comfort uh, for both the individual and also for the carer. Um, and to ensure enough lighting and accessible positioning for the carer, you know, if uh, depend the um, if the patient if the individual require care. Thirdly, for uh, use of instructions and explanation, um, whether it could be verbal or pictorial or use of videos um, to show that uh, it will be you know brushing time.
to include uh, the patient in the uh, or the individual in toothbrushing time. For example, where's your toothbrush? Uh, let's go brush your teeth now. Um, that could um, their their inclusion may um, increase their cooperation in the extent of their abilities, depending on the extent of their abilities. Um, the environment, whether you want to include or disclude any uh, distractors, uh, for example, use of music, TV, reinforces would mean any promise activity for after brushing, what, you know, um, any praise as well. So this should be included in um, positive reinforcement plans. Uh, on how, like uh, compliments, praise, stickers to build their self-esteem and even increase their coping skills. For those who, uh, who require full support or um, um, in their providing, in, for those who require supervision or provide support for oral care, especially for those for individuals who resist oral care, um, they may need a support plan. And for example, in mouth opening for using uh, another toothbrush or mouth props to help um, with the, to help aid oral care um, in the training, for example, and also to build their confidence. Lastly is on oral touch and desensitizing. So um, this could be separate from the brushing itself. It's to allow, um, the individual to, to accept care, um, either, you know, to just put a glove finger or washcloth just so that they are used to having a, um, uh, being touched on the, around the oral area. Lastly, for any special adjuncts, um, if they have been prescribed any oral treatment, such as high concentration for toothpaste, whether they need uh, use of hexane gel, fluoride rinses um, needs to be incorporated into it. Um, whether flossing uh, needs to be, can be done um, on their own or needs to be assisted. Edentulous patients who has a removal prosthesis may require uh, additional care or additional instructions on um, dental hygiene care. And then lastly, um, just an assessment of the intake of and frequency and the quantity of food for any sugar intake. So in conclusion, all individuals have a right um, to equal standards of health um, and care, including oral health. Good oral health um, has positive benefits um, for health, dignity, self-esteem, and as well as social integration. The impact of poor oral health uh, can be profound, especially in uh, people with disabilities. And there is no one size fits all approach in providing oral care or people with disabilities or special care needs. Instead, individualized adaptations um, to evidence-based knowledge is the key to the success in improving oral health. These are some a list of useful resources um, that uh, you can look into to, to get more information for people with disabilities. Thank you. Dr. Hanley, thank you so much. What an excellent lecture. And um, thank you for sort of opening up quite a number of uh, really interesting insights into the oral hygiene. I'm just going to open up the um, question time to um, Dr. Johns. Um, Jacob, do you want to ask any comments, questions? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hanley. And uh, uh, was uh, very, uh, you have put them all in, in the perspective of uh, how to, um, what to look out for as well as uh, how to manage 
those with physical, psychological, intellectual, or uh, sensory disabilities. Now, now when you and you also mentioned about the approaches, right? The, the three, the four uh, aspects of approaches that are, uh, they all come in different uh, levels. So, is yeah. there any specific guide as to you know how you you will be able to categorize them into a specific uh, need, or we have to look at them individually? Those approaches. Um, I think um, uh, we're looking at um, uh, I, I, we're looking into different studies basically for people with disabilities, and we know um, the approaches that they have. We 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 sort of know these are the you know four approaches in terms of individual, physical, um, behavioral support, and special adjuncts. And this can be different for everyone. Everyone is different. Uh, whether someone says uh, they have uh, the same. Uh, one condition does not mean that they have the same condition. So it should be catered to what they have. With this, um, with this individualized adaptations, as I said, um, it would um, encourage them to be much more engaging to their own oral care. So um, uh, it could be, you know, um, and we can start with simple things, um, you know, little things. We, we start with what they have um, in place at the moment. Um, to change it drastically would be it will be too big of a change. So start simple, um, small behavioral changes first, and then we can tweak it as we go along. Yeah. Is that what you? Yeah. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you, Callum. I'm not sure whether we've lost you. Um, are there any comments, questions on your part? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I had to leave, um, but I'm, I've been listening to the presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Hanny. Uh, one comment I have is that for many people with disabilities, they or their families often do not prioritize oral health. What do you think some of the reasons for that are? Um. I think oral health has always been the backseat of um, everything, like of uh, general health. They don't, it's um, trying to incorporate oral health into the general health. I think a lot of, um, I suppose if we want to be real, um, oral health, um, oral care uh, can be challenging. Um, it's, um, it's being close to them, close to the individual itself. Um, so it can be a challenge, but knowing that the impact on how, um, how if we neglect oral care or if we, um, if we find the, how do I say it, um, if we, we feel that oral care is not important, no, that's not right, hang on. Um, I would say... Um, we have to put oral care back into general health because um, it's all about communicating. It's all about um, uh, like, you know, their ability. We have, to, we have to stress on the importance of how oral health um, would affect how they eat, how they speak, um, how they smile, and how they engage with socially with, with those around them. Um, and I think, uh, as I said, um, there are studies that says that oral care is hard to do, and um, not hard to do. It's um, uh, if you if you haven't done it, it can be quite challenging. But it's the small steps that you, you need to learn how to do it uh, in small. You need to break down the steps into more manageable tasks to help um, make it a little bit easier. Good. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, Dr. Hani, one of the um, often questions that I'm asked is the role of high fluoride toothpaste um, in many of these um, patient groups. Um, do you have any thoughts or any guidelines that you use when you recommend, say, um, a Jurafat toothpaste or 
2,500 parts per million or 5,000 parts per million? Um, most of the time, it depends on the availability um, of the toothpaste itself. Um, you're looking into the, you, you would need to look into their uh, carrier stress assessment. Um, you're having a look at how, how much carries um, do they have over the past six months or the past year, or what, what sort of, um, how, who they are. We're looking into the, um, we're looking into the evidence base on the delivering better oral health method. Um, but it, it's also down to um, whether it's available to where, where you are. I sure. mean, um, most of these, uh, most of the patients with special care needs would require um, higher fluoridated toothpaste at 5,000 parts per million. Um, yeah. But depending on whether they can rinse out, whether um, do they have fluoridated water as well. So those um, does play a role in, in choosing which, um, uh, which concentration you want to go for. Okay, I can understand that. No, that's really helpful. Well, I just want to say it has been an excellent time. You've given us a lot of food for thoughts, a really good structure about thinking about oral health and hygiene in um, the special care groups. So uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, we wish you well in Brunei. Okay, thank you.